Hey everyone, it's John Isaias here, and we were on a call earlier with Zio uh, from doing Rifidium uh, work, and Isaias thought, because I'm wor working through, and no, I didn't create the objects slash classes course, right, but I've been working with Isaias of what goes into it and the order and making sure things, and I'm a great person because I don't understand them, right, so I can watch them and go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> it, is a good, yeah. it is a good baseline, like, did I do yeah. a good job of explaining it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, if you're interested, we'll be releasing a soon. You can go to the URL on the screen and uh, sign up. If you sign up now, you get a 50% discount when you go to buy. So I would say sign up now. Uh, and there's no commitment, right? You're just signing up saying you're interested. Uh, yeah. Anyway, and during the call when they were chatting, um, I didn't bring it up because I was just listening and stuff. And then after we were just catching up and Isaiah was uh, just mentioning to me and I'm like, you know, I actually almost chimed in at one point saying, well, wouldn't, you know, because you were talking about doing stuff, automating Chrome, and then automating Firefox. Yes. And at, at, well, at that point, some of the capability stuff was inside. Uh, this is where I'm a little fuzzy I'm from memory. In, was it inside the, the main class? class no, yeah. it was outside of it. And you said like, oh, isn't this an instance that you would put it outside? And I said, yeah, that's what he did. And it is a good idea because it has nothing to do with a specific Rufidium class itself. It is a capability uh, object that depends on the browser. Each browser has its own capabilities. So it made sense to have it in a different file and in a different class by itself. Um, now, when we were discussing that, uh, I just told you it is a very good example uh, you know, to show why it's good to have classes right. and what the, the inheritance really means. And it was like a very good example, and I think it was a good idea to just go ahead and so show. We're going to show concepts. It's not the actual code, right? But we're just talking about no. The so, so the concept itself, I will try to make it not specific to this class. But the idea is this: you have a class here, and it is separated from the main code. So, Rufadium class is here, and the capabilities class is here. And I was saying, like every single browser might have different capabilities. And now most of those functions might work almost the same. Like for example, most of the browsers would have a debug port, okay, to, for you to actually connect to. So I think all of them are gonna have that set binary. So this function, what it does is tells you where the binary is located, like the executable, where is it? So all the browsers, you might want to say that. But there's a few things that might not work the same, like the arguments here, add arguments. This link, when you click on it, it says Chromium command line. So that those are command line switches just for Chromium. So there's a little bit of a difference how it would work with other browsers. I was gonna say, let me chime in here real quickly, is the, the stuff you mentioned earlier, each of the browsers do them. What's really interesting, because it's really not part of the browser, it's part of just like the command line stuff, right? Yeah, of, yeah. It's, it's not unique to them. And that's why right. it doesn't make sense to break them out because it'll be, they'll have different paths, but exactly. that's not what we're talking about because the functionality is all the same as far as the code goes. Right, now, right. what you're getting to now is like, they actually implement them differently, slightly differently. Yeah. Yet, yeah. An important part also from talking to you is they all actually will probably have a lot of the same functionality, but how they actually use them is slightly different. It's a little bit different. Yeah. And, and sometimes, different. yeah, sometimes the coding might be different for me as well in Auto Hotkey because they're different in their own implementation. Right. But that's where I said, like, this is where the capabilities class come as a very good example as to the, the class inheritance. So now, now that I know that each browser has the option, well, the drivers have their own capabilities, I know that all of them have a basic set of capabilities and they probably always work similarly on those things, but there are some of them that differ or differ. That's where I would do this. I would say class and I would say Chrome capabilities extends capabilities, right? So now I already have the basic code that I want, but whatever is just specific for Chrome, I can put it here as a function or 
a variable, whatever it is. And it is just for Chrome. And down here, I could use class. Again, let me just copy this whole line and just change. Uh, I should just change this for, you know, Mozilla. So that's Firefox. It extends that. And I would have my functions for it here. And I, one of them might be the add arguments because probably the arguments, how I get them from uh, Chrome might not be the same as how I get them from Mozilla. So the, the, the add arguments uh, class or uh, method in this case might need some fine tweaking that is just for Firefox. But, but here's the thing, I don't need to write the whole thing again. All the other parts of it are gonna work the same. So the set binary is gonna work the same. The debug part is gonna work the same. I don't have to change them all just for Mozilla. The only thing that I need to change is this one here. And, and that makes more sense. And when I was just showing the example, I just told you the way how I would implement it is here in Rufadium, when you create a new driver, he goes ahead and automatically sets the capabilities to the browser. And what happens is that it defaults to Chrome, okay? So these, if you have options, it automatically defaults to Chrome. What I would do is actually create a switch case statement that what it would do is this. So I would do this switch, so switch, um, and I would use this browser, right? And I would say case, let's say Chrome. And for Chrome, I would just have this line here. And it goes, instead of using the capabilities class itself, I would just use Chrome capabilities that I just created just for Chrome, right? So I just use this one here. And now I just duplicate this and I have like Firefox and instead of Chrome, notice how easy it is for me to just go ahead and do this. And now this object will load specifically for Chrome. This one will load specifically for Mozilla. The code makes more sense. Well, let's say I come along, two other points I'm gonna add in here to uh, just to take the thunder away from you, right, is, one, let's say you and Zio are, are updating Rufidium library. This will automatically, you know, get updated because I didn't tie it to it, right? And I don't have to have it multiple times, which is awesome. Right. But the second one is, let's say I wanted to add, what is the Apple um, browser? Or, 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 yeah, Safari. So now, yeah, that would be awesome. Because, yeah, yeah, because now I just duplicate this line. Right. Here, I just changed for Safari. Right. Here, I would use Safari. And yeah. now here, I just have to say, I just duplicate right. this line, right? Put it here, say Safari. And if for now, Safari is the same as the Chrome one, if they're the same, I just leave my code like this and it will still work. I can have a blank class like this because it is extending the original one. Okay. So long as the Safari and the capabilities right. works the same. Which is the I, point of the inheritance. Right, right. so it, it inherits everything. It yeah. inherits everything. And, 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 and I have my class already inherited. I just have to say, you know, and for me, it makes more sense. Oh, sorry. Here on my code, here on my code, it makes more sense. Even though the capabilities are the same as the original one, but it makes more sense. And if at any point I need to modify right. something, so then I just go, just go here and say like, oh, you know what? Now I just discovered that the debug function, the debug port is right. gonna work differently. So now I just go ahead and do this. The port is gonna be, you know, default 9223. But now the way how it works is differently than the one above. So this way how I'm implementing it is not how it works because it doesn't allow me to choose 
127, 0.0.0. It actually, the way how it works is that I just grab this here, put it here and say instead local host because it doesn't let me do anything else. So just because Safari needs it that way, then I just put it like that for Safari, you know? Now, just imagine if you didn't build it this way and it was back to the original way, how hard it would be to build in logic to kind of take care of what you're describing. You could do it. Yeah, I, I could do it because then I would have to use a if and else statement up here. Right. So right. now my browser here, it would have to say if, and now I have to add a new parameter is browser, right? Uh, if browser equals Safari, yeah, I would do something else. Yeah. And, and yet everything wouldn't, the way in your approach, everything Safari is grouped together. And it's right, so exactly. So now, now it, makes, it makes my code easier to maintain because now, and, and right now it's just a simple, it, it is just a simple example, but sometimes it becomes so many options, right? That then you will have an if else statement that is very long <laughs> and it is annoying to maintain. But with the, with the way how we're just describing, which is just using inheritance, then I can keep all the changes that have to do with Safari in their own place and I don't have to modify anything else. So this, is, this was a very good example as to why I would use classes in the first place and why, uh, you know, if I need inheritance, like now I just need to modify the add extensions for everybody. I just modify it here and all these three objects down here get updated without me having to do anything. So yeah, this is, this is the example that I wanted to show you regarding that. Yeah, so uh, if you're if you're just you know haven't learned classes yet or still just learning them, I've I've walked through it and stuff. I think people even who've been using classes for a while are going to learn some really cool stuff in it because you've you've gone down uh, pretty deep in a lot of things. So, yep, yeah, check it, sign up and uh, check it out.